Hey guys, Cheesehead Logic here for Quantic Gaming, and today it is tutorial time. This is my very first tutorial, so be nice. Uh, we're going to be looking at WCS Europe, TVP, MVP versus Sauce. MVP being, of course, the four time GSL champion, six time finalist, and all the additional achievements <laughs> and the multitude of achievements that he's had all over the world and throughout his career going to be showing us a very interesting biomechanical bio tank build I guess if you want to call it biomechanical build and it's off of a two base now with the metagame and kind of how it is you know a lot of Terrans have had some issues dealing with Protoss uh, most Terrans are sort of feeling hopeless in the fact that they can't really do any serious aggression against a Protoss within the first 10 minutes without um, having a high potential high high risk low reward of actually doing anything and winning the, uh, the game just in that time frame now MVP is going to be showing us a very standard Reaper opener that we see out of a lot of Terrans just in general but we'll watch as he follows up as well he's going to open up with 10 supply 12 racks and 13 gas now a reminder this will all be written down in the YouTube description if you guys you know are just kind of build order buffs and want to write it down really quick or and jot it down and then try it on your own instead of watching it feel free don't be shy um, everybody's a different type of learner now, again, something I might note why this build is very effective is because of the fact that Protoss do feel very comfortable with their macro under the game, and they feel as though they could take a Nexus at a very early stage of the game, very soon, as basically as quick as possible, off of one gate or one gate cyber core. So it's going to be very, very important to pay attention to exactly what MVP is going to be doing right now. As soon as his barracks finishes, that building SCV that was building that, he's going to send it right across the map, and there we see it heading across. Now, what that is, it's got one sole job, and that is to eBay block the natural. So send that SCV right to the natural and follow that up also with a Reaper. Reaper will come out on 16, follow that up with an orbital as well as a 17 supply. Now what this is going to do, this is probably going to kind of rustle Sauce a little bit because he wants to take a very quick expand, but he's not going to have the opportunity. As we see, he's going to be opening up Zeld instead of Stalker and... Typically, if he's just sent it across the map, the Reaper is actually the perfect counter for it and will delay Sase with whatever he plans to do for the time being. He had a chance probably to knock that SCV down, but you know, no harm, no foul as a Terran player. Hey, if you want to give us the advantage, feel free to. Um, with the barracks, as soon as the Reaper does come out, you want to add a reactor. That way you could start pumping double Marines um, for defensive purposes. Now we're watching that SCV. It's getting on out of there. You don't want to finish the engineering bay. Reminder, you want to salvage that as soon as that gets the very, almost its lowest HP point to get all those, as many minerals as you possibly can back. And during this whole entire time, we're seeing he's just blocking that area right now, not allowing him to expand. And this is throwing off Sase quite a bit. During this time, once he had enough minerals, about at 20 supply, we're looking at uh, Command Center getting thrown down on the high ground, and very important on the high ground because if there's high pressure and a lot of gateways, it tends to be very, very tough to kind of deal with two places at once. You'd rather just chill and sit up on your high ground with one base for the time being until you get a few additional more units out. Now we're seeing a factory getting added on on 24 as well as a supply depot on 24. That is for mine production. Now mines are going to be a good counter to any early stalkers that might want to walk up the ramp. They one-shot oracles and will just be a very kind of harmful presence to Sase if he plans to do any kind of counter attack very soon. As soon as the factory does finish up, we're going to watch and see as he does add the starport. Now, here we see the Reaper still being alive, and that's very important, guys. The Reaper is one of those units that you want to keep alive. During your initial scouting and during the initial attack that we saw with the Reaper come on in here, you want to make sure to get that Reaper out of there, keep it alive, and make sure to utilize it later, about at six minutes, five and a half minutes, to go scout out and find out what, the, what your opponent's tech is going to be. And with what he found out, he said, hey, I see a robotics bay, I see a nexus, there's no chance that he's going to go for a very hard aggression on me, unless it's maybe Dark Templars, but with the amount he's already invested in, I doubt that's going to be the case. So first mine is underway, it's going to finish up, he's going to follow that up with a second mine, and a reminder, he's only going to build two mines, so make sure to pay attention to that, don't build more than two mines, unless it becomes very necessary for any reason. He has a second gas at 630, that's going to allow him to produce the additional gas units, uh, like medevacs, mines, and tanks. Don't supply block yourself, always, uh, <laughs> always, uh, always a good thing not to do. 
Now, with the starport finishing up, he starts building a medevac right away, and what that's going to allow him to do, not only just give him kind of a little bit of help in case any pressure does come to him, but also gives him an option to go for a counter pressure with mines and marines, so we'll keep an eye on that. As the factory finishes up, he wants to put down a tech lab, that way he can start tank production, doing a wonderful job. And this is just going to be very, very effective in a sense where typically 1-1-1 doesn't work, but because it's so economically... Um, I guess surrounded. The build is economic. The build in itself is more a little bit more economical, so it's going to have the opportunity to show off a little bit of muscle. Now, after the second medevac is underway, after it comes out, you don't want to build anymore for just a tiny bit. You want to save that gas to uh, get more tanks out, to get upgrades and everything else that you additionally need. As we see right now about the, at the 8 minute mark, he starts adding two additional barracks. That's going to allow him to eventually go into his upgrades of stim and combat shields. Third gas coming down at about 8.15, I want to say. And you see, he's just not stopping producing tanks. That's very important, not only because that's going to allow him to have a very strong, aggressive attack, but, you know, it shields him for anything that, you know, Sase might bring across the map. Tank splash damage against gateway units is very, 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 very effective, and it also just range itself in siege mode. It's very helpful against blink stalkers and various other types of uh, aggressions that a Protoss might put uh, <laughs> try to pull off. So we're watching right now, he's finally finishing up those two barracks. As soon as they're done, add two tech labs because that's where your upgrades are going to come from. And make sure also as well to saturate your gas. He's just starting an eBay at 9 minutes. Now if you have any urgency that your opponent might be going into Dark Templars or something very fishy, feel free to get your engineering bay a little bit earlier. That way you have the necessary turrets uh, to be able to defend against that type of aggression from the Protoss player. Third gas coming down at 10.30, I mean sorry, 9.30 for our uh, for our Terran player MVP, that's going to allow him as well to get his plus one. And now he's going to start his upgrades during this whole entire time. He's starting a stim first because it takes the longest. Very important. He's going to start uh, plus one attack on, off of his engineering base second. And then he's going to start off with uh, third combat shield because it takes the least amount of time for that upgrade to finish. So very smart and order wise. You don't want to, you know, go backwards, get combat shields just to let it finish very early. <laughs> and then from there, just leave it be. Now, with these widow mines, they're not very useful in the mid to late game, so he's going to utilize them to block off the expansions and to also give them a little bit of scouting information. Of course, this one does get spotted, unfortunately, but he is at least able to put that second mine over at that third location by the rocks and know about that base if it does get taken. Reactor getting put down on the starport finally at about, you know, 10 and 45, I want to say. That way he could start into double medevac production, or if he scouts out that sauce is going into Colossus, he could produce Vikings, so you have the necessary counter or the ability to necessary counter your, necessarily counter your opponent. And as during this whole entire time, guys, notice he's adding Marauders, some Marines. He's also adding tanks during the whole entire time, added two additional barracks during, I think it was 1030, if I'm not mistaken, as well. So um, that way he's got five barracks, one factory and one starport production and as you see here we go 1145 he's got four tanks good amount of bio a couple medevacs with him in the army and as well also being very active on the map going to put a little bit of pressure on his opponent sauce pull him out of position that way he could get a little bit of a better position himself and because of this delay, and, and this all goes back to the eBay block, because of that delay on the Nexus, Sase doesn't exactly have the economy that he might want to have right now or have the necessary amount of units. He was hoping that he could take it a, a lot earlier and then invest into that, but because of that, MVP has delayed him, has taken the supply lead, and how he's producing very efficiently with his macro not blocking himself, he's got a great count. Now, this is one of those situations where you don't want to get over results and move too far up forward without knowing where your opponent is. As you see, MVP is very patient, starts the siege starts the siege position very far back from the natural make sure he's very patient and then he'll slowly start creeping up pull a couple of stvs with yourself as well so you can start putting bunkers down and getting that contain going now mothership goes down some templars get down and now this just kind of becomes a situation where mvp everything is finished up all of his upgrades that he wanted he's got a good tank line and he's got marines as well you want to keep a, a medevac or a viking or a marine up on the high ground just to make sure you have that extra vision and to help out that range the additional range for those tanks to see what's going to be heading up at you if the protoss does decide to break out very very fast allow the tanks to get the maximum amount of damage done. 
And as you see, this is just such a wonderful contain. And Protoss is usually because they assume that, you know, this is going to go into macro game, a pro Terran player is going to take a quick third base, I'll take my third base, I'll get more Templars out, we'll just be in the middle of the map with 200, 200 army. No, that is not the case. Sase's got some very hard decisions in front of him because MVP, is, he's got a very heavy high tank count right now. He's getting plus one, and he's also starting to produce Vikings because he does see those Colossus. It becomes very, very hard, especially in a choke like that, to walk right down and be able to break through very easily easily and as you see during this whole entire time MVP is making sure exactly that he's got a little bit of high ground vision and knows exactly what's going on because as soon as those Protoss units move just a tiny bit too far to uh, too low they're going to get hit by tanks and the splash damage uh, with enough hits is very very effective. Now if you guys find yourself in a position like this where just as MVP he's got the position as well he's uh, basically just trying to make sure right now he's paying attention to the Protoss macro up get your third command center up make sure you get your upgrades don't forget about your macro it's very important because Protoss do have the ability to break out, and if they do break out, it becomes very hard for a Terran who's been investing into a just simple Marine tank with 1-1 uh, upgrades. Not even 1-1 at this point. It's going to be very hard to play against throughout the rest of the game. Also, be very active on the map. Make sure to check for third bases. Those cannot come up. If those third bases do come up and the Protoss gets enough saturation or enough mining from them, that could be another one of those scenarios where it becomes very problematic for you. And at this point, even if he does have Templars, just make sure to spread your units very evenly, macro as best you possibly can. And look at MVP, just how wonderful he's using that range right there. With the tanks, he's basically on the cliff right there. If the Protoss army moves just a little bit too far forward, he's going to get a huge dose of splash damage. Not what the Doctor ordered for Protosses. Uh, Zeratul would definitely not appreciate that. Now... Right here, 16 minutes, MVP is maxed out, 197 to 160 of Sase. He's got a lot of tanks at the front. His 1-1 is completely finished up. He's got medevacs, he's got vikings, he's got everything necessary, really, and he knows about the expansions. He's got that widow mine that's still being a very huge problem for his opponent. And here we go. Here comes Sase trying to break it out, and here comes the, uh, the strength of the tanks, guys. Taking out all the all the high templars, and you could even focus them down as well if they come on forward. And the GG coming from Sase, wonderful build by MVP. And you know this isn't exactly a band-aid or a heal all to all the issues that TVP that all the Terrans are dealing with in TVP. But you know it's a little bit like aloe vera oil you might get a little bit burned but it will at least help it cool off the problems it'll give you a chance to recover I like it personally I've used it on ladder I would suggest it to many others and especially if the, one of the best players in the world is utilizing this build and beating Protoss I would definitely take it from him as well uh, if you guys do want to find this VOD be sure to check out WCS uh, Europe this was during the finals weekend it was MVP versus Sase game number one if you guys got any questions for me, feel free to ask at QuanticCHL on Twitter. We'll also put the build order in the description. And also, you know, put a little bit of commentary, guys. Let me know what you guys think of uh, how this turned out. Hopefully, I give a little bit of insight. This is kind of my first tutorial uh, video, and I hope it's helpful and enlightening and very helpful for some of the Terrans that have been struggling against the Protoss race. But... Uh, as far as it goes, that will do it for me, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to Quantic Pro, and be sure to hit that Find Match button, guys. I'll see you on ladder.